All right, I'm going to remove the mountain man from this small turntable I've built here. Ah! Because every time I press on the uh, clay of the uh, base, it puts pressure on the sculpting stand and pushes it away from me all the time. So I've got to uh, re redo this. So I'll be back as soon as I get this reattached to the major main sculpting stand. Time to play with some clay. All right, I'm. I've just. I've dismounted the uh, clay from the small turntable. It just makes it easier for me to handle this piece now, without it being attached to that. Because every time I put pressure on the base to put the clay on it, the uh, ba the whole sculpting stand would move back. And uh, it was playing havoc on my uh, ability to do this, so I decided to dis dismount it. So I'm basically just uh, adding clay to the base uh, because I've got to uh, do that at some point, and it's got to be part of the sculpture. Um, I've got several several rock pictures that I've uh, taken off the web. Um, I did a search on Google for uh, rock formations of Montana and got everything but. But this is pretty close right here and so is this one. And this is kind of like a breakdown of what the rock formation would be like. And that helps me to sculpt the rock. Uh, Montana has particular rock formations in different areas and uh, that's what I'm trying to show. This whole valley here was a major hunting ground and trapping area for the mountain men in the uh, early 1800s. One of the uh, first gentleman who started uh, trapping was a gentleman by the name of John Coulter and uh, this very well could have been him I've actually met John Coulter's family I think they live in South Carolina or down south someplace he uh, came out west with uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition and after they had completed their journey to the west coast via rivers the Columbia River and the Missouri River and the uh, Jefferson and the uh, and they discovered the headwaters of the uh, Missouri River which is just about 40 50 miles north of here um, they started heading back towards the states and a couple of mountain men or a couple of trappers asked uh, Coulter if he'd join them and uh, because he knew the area now because he'd been there and they needed somebody that could uh, guide them for the best trapping areas and uh, John asked Lewis and Clark if he could be excused or released from duty and they gave him permission to go and trap beaver about 40 miles north of here he was uh, trapping beaver with a gentleman by the name of 
Potts. I don't. I can't remember Potts first. Potts's first name. I did meet his family too. And let me tell you something. When you meet people who are famous in the uh, founding of the uh, country, it really gives you pause because you realize it's real. It's they're real people, and uh, they had families, and they still have families. Um, I've got a buddy in here who's laughing in the background, and his name is uh, Steve Goff. He's uh, the author of a great book that you need to go buy. I'm telling you, this book is amazing. It's about the story of John Coulter and, and an event that took place just 40 miles, 50 miles north of here, where he was... Uh, Steve? Yes. Come here. Good. Stand right here. And look, sit, sit where I'm sitting and talk to him. About Thanks, it. Dave, for the opportunity to talk to all your viewers. Uh, John Coulter was a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition that stayed behind and returned to the Yellowstone country in the area 1806. And he did that to uh, trap beaver. Um, oh, about a year after he left the expedition, he joined up with another expedition that was coming up here to actually start a trading fort, and that was led by a man named Manuel Lisa. And Manuel Lisa sent John Coulter out into the wilderness to try to bring in friendly Indian tribes to trade. And one of the tribes that he brought in uh, were a tribe of Indians called the Salish. Uh, some people refer to them as, as the Flatheads. Well, anyway, when he was leading them towards Manuel's Fort, uh, they got in a huge Indian battle, probably involving over 2,000 warriors. The culture was wounded, um, and a lot of Indians were killed. And in the nick of time, the Salish were represented. Uh, rescued by another tribe called the Crow. Well, some odd months later, uh, Coulter decided to return to where this battle hel uh, was held, and he came with another member of the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition, a guy by the name of John Potts, and they came to this valley, it's called the Valley of the Three Forks, to trap beaver. And while they were trapping beaver, they were discovered by the Blackfeet, who captured them, killed Potts, uh, butchered his remains, beat Coulter with uh, the remains of his friend, and then stripped him naked and allowed him to run while all the Indians in the world chased him. Well, he made a dash for a river about five miles away, the Madison River. En route was caught by the lead warrior. They had a, uh, had a struggle and Coulter killed him. He made it to the river, found an abandoned beaver house, hid inside the beaver house until later that night after he was sure all the Indians, the Blackfeet, had finally given up. And then he uh, went overland completely naked with winter coming on all the way to Manuel's Fort approximately 250 miles away. Um, he made it. He made it in horrible condition, but he made it nevertheless. And he was such a man that he decided that he was going to come back in the dead of winter by himself to try to uh, get back the beaver skins and the traps he had left. But en route, he was again attacked by the Indians, and again he escaped. Um, made it back to uh, Manuel's Fort and subsequently was asked to lead an expedition back into Three Forks uh, the following year, which he did. And that, that incident became another ill-fated incident in which many, many of the trappers uh, were killed and butchered and tortured, etc. And Coulter finally said he had enough and he left. And he left with a couple of uh, young trappers and en route he was ambushed again. Now, this time he got his revenge and um, he finally was able to leave uh, and that was the end, that's the end of the story. So John, John Coulter was forced to run for his life naked, no moccasins, nothing, just run. And unfortunately for the Native Americans, 
of the Blackfeet, he was a fast runner. Never mind, he had to run across fields that had uh, prickly pear cactus hidden in the uh, grass. By the time he got to uh, Billings, Montana, or where Billings is now, this was uh, almost 200 miles east of here. Um, after evading the uh, Blackfeet, he stumbled into a fort there, and uh, his feet were just like hamburger. He healed up, and a couple of weeks later was back out trapping. That's that strength of not only character, that strength of body. Just unbelievable. All right, I've taken some of this monster clay that I'm going to make the nice sheath out of, and I've made a flat piece that I can now try to make into a nice sheath. And I need to... Now they would ha have <coughs> a triangle cut out of it where the belt would fit through or in the case of this uh, warrior, this mountain man I'm doing right now, his sash would fit through and would hold it on next to his body really tight. Now the knife could have been handled, could have been made out of deer antler, elk antler, or wood. I'm going to do a deer antler type knife handle. Because if the uh, wooden handle split or broke, um, they'd make it out of something that was handy. All right, I'm going to put this back here. I've cut a piece of clay out of from the shirt because this uh, would actually press into the shirt up against his body and cause wrinkles that would be related to the knife being there. And uh, so that's where I'm going to put it right there. Anyway, I'm going to let this uh, sit overnight, get hard like monster clay that I can do and come back to it tomorrow. All right, good night everybody and I'll see you next time. Please give me a like and a subscribe and ring the little bell. Also, don't forget I have instructional videos available now online. The link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos. Later, everybody. Good night.